Melbourne. Tape. Well, we have finished the MHX NSJ842. It is in the drying rack, all epoxied up, ready to roll. We're gonna take it out tomorrow morning, see what we can do. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, bright and early towards the end of August right now. First cool morning of the year. We're gonna head out, see if uh, hopefully that cold weather it was 52 degrees last night. Hopefully that doesn't shut the fish down. We've got no current flow, the river's super low. So we'll see what happens. It's really good wacky rigging conditions because a lot of times in that low water, the fish will pull out from the wood and sit out in front of it. So a wacky rig is really good to fish those areas around it. Just a good way to generate a bite during this time of year, which is pretty tough. So we're gonna take the new rod we just built, that NSJ 8, uh, 842. It's a seven foot, two power. It's perfect for skipping, perfect for casting around the wacky rig. So let's go see if we can catch a couple of fish. We got idle out of here and we'll zoom up the river a little bit and see what we can do. Boy, you're strong fish. That's a decent one. Come here. Two and a half pounder. And the old Berkeley General Maxent wacky rig. God, they're so much fun. They're so red in this river, it's beautiful. Let's get him back. Okay. All right. Fish number one. Got my line a little bit. So a couple of things that I just want to point out real quick. I know I've talked about them already in the video, but this rod, so as you guys can see, this is the NSJ842. It's a seven foot. This rod's rated for up to a half ounce, an eighth ounce to a half ounce bait. You know, this is to me the perfect wacky rig rod for a couple of reasons. One, you know, it's only a seven footer. So as you guys can see, I'm fishing wood just solid wood all the way down the bank there's a lot of wood you can't even see that fish came off a lay down that I didn't even see is there but was right 
right there it's running all the way across here so I like to have a seven footer because I can skip the bait into the areas where I need to be it's just a much better rod to control it's shorter you know if I'm trying to skip it up under the bank like that I can do that if I'm just it just gives me that much more control in this situation if I'm fishing docks it's the same sort of thing if I'm just going down the bank and I'm not fishing targets a little longer rod would be fine this battery just died but I can go back to this one so what I'm getting at here is to have a little shorter rod and a seven footer is not a short rod in today's day and age people would consider seven foot not that long but it's probably one of the best all around sizes uh, but if you're talking about skipping baits a seven footer is great so I like it it's a two power so it's a little bit heavier than a medium light I would call this a light medium which is something that I like to have too because I'm fishing as you can see I'm fishing a weedless wacky rig so I like to have something that gives me a little bit more uh, backbone to be able to get the fish out of this type of wood and at the same time be able to get the hook driven through that little uh, light wire weedless wire that is on the hook so it's one of those things that just gives me a little bit more control I'm gonna retie and get back to this change batteries too That's another nice one right off that same log. Just retied. I threw back there, and it's another one about the same size. Maybe even a little bigger. Just scarfed it. I love fishing for these guys. Another two and a half pounder. And we got water that's pretty off colored today and because the water's so low and we've had no rain it's just a lot of times you'd think the river would clear up but when the water gets low you get a lot more uh, wave action off the sand banks and it ends up silting everything up a little bit more so it, it gets this silty color it's not dirty it's not it's not clear though and when that happens i like to go with like the purple max scent, it just seems like it works really well under these conditions. If it were a little clearer, I'd probably just go with uh, the green pumpkin. But in this case, the purple is one of my go-tos in a little dirtier water all over the country. It's a great, it's a great purple. It's not a super dark purple. It's more of like a, a blood purple or a, I don't know, just that ox blood color. What was that? Catfish. Catfish. S the old sandwich cat. Come here. That's what we call a sandwich cat. Couple pieces of bread, a couple of sides of catfish. You want to say hi to the camera? Hi. Not what we're after, but fun to catch.
Ooh, that's a good one. I want to point something out to you guys here. It's a three pounder. Come here, fish. Probably a three and a half. He's been caught before and he's blind. I'll show you the good side. He's probably three and a quarter. We'll let him go, but I do want to point something out. So all the fish we've caught today, and I'm sure there's going to be some I don't show you, have come off logs that are parallel to the main channel, running this way. The reason that's important when you're river fishing is because it it creates a much longer zone for that fish to hold on. What I mean by that is if you see, hopefully you can see way up there, you've got the sand bank comes off, right about where that log is, there's about a foot and a half drop. So the boat's sitting in, I'm only in like three foot of water. So when it drops, you get about two foot under that log. The key here is that log is stuck on the sand break, but for the almost that entire length of that drop, of that log, which is probably, I mean, 40 feet, it sits right on the break. Anytime you have that on a river and a lake, that is so key. But if you notice, like, I'm not necessarily fishing perpendicular to the log. Like, that fish came on more of a parallel or 45 degree cast. You want your bait to come down that log with the current because that's going to keep your bait in that strike zone where you're almost basically throwing it up and letting the current continue to pull it under that log. It's a very, very key thing. All of my better fish today so far have come off of it. And you can get bit thrown per perpendicular like that. I just think it's better to come at the log at a more 45 degree angle. And in this case, right now, I'm throwing perpendiculars. I'm talking to you because I've just caught one. I've moved up the log. I don't want to miss anything, but you're much more efficient to throw up. And if you can cast parallel or as parallel as you can get, that's just going to allow you to put your bait in the position of where those fish are. Because in this dark water, if I threw one right on the end, maybe I'll get bit there. If I threw one in the middle, maybe I'll get bit, which is where I did. Or I could throw one on the top end. That's three casts. Takes me a little while to fish the log. The reality is though, there could be a fish there, there, there. With this darker water in the current, it's all based on maybe there's a branch coming off the tree. Maybe there's a rock under the water. So in order to fish that more efficiently, you're better off coming at it from more of a 45 degree angle versus just trying to cast straight perpendicular at the log and make 50 casts. That, at that point, you're not being efficient. You can fish a log like this in four or four casts if you're more at a 45 or parallel to the log. Guys, that squirrel just fell out of the tree. I have never seen a squirrel fall out of a tree. And I hope I just got that on video because that was a squirrel that fell out of the tree. That was crazy. <laughs> he came from a long ways. Golly, that's another catfish.
Well guys, as you can see, the NS842 catches big catfish as well. I think we're gonna end it on that. The weatherman said no rain's supposed to come. Well, right over these trees, I'm hearing thunder and it's pretty dark. It's a good way to end it. This guy's got me all slimed up. Look, he's got a broken whisker. Anyways. Thanks for watching, guys. I gotta also take Hank to a monster truck rally. Hank and Duke wanna do that, so I should probably get back to make sure we make that in time because they would be very upset if we missed that. They're really into the Hot Wheel monster truck, so they're pretty excited about going to that. So we're gonna end it on that note, guys. If you're looking for a good rod to build that you want for wacky rigs, the NSJ 842 by MHX, you can get all the components at Mud Hole. I'll put the, uh, the list, the component list, as well as the dimensions so you can build the exact same rod that I do in the video and in the description. Okay, I'm gonna get out of here. Now I stink. I gotta go shower before I go to monster trucks.